Hello and welcome to Woman Farm. Now if you're anything like me, you're trying to cut down on plastics and especially single use plastics. And it does feel like the, the culture around plastics is finally starting to change. Um, whether that's too late is for another time. But we as single individuals can all do our part. And one bit that I want to do is reduce my dog poo bag waste. Now I do think as smallholders, gardeners and homesters, we're automatically thinking about recycling anyway. We, we make compost, we grow our own food, so we're reducing our use of plastics um, just by that. However, as you've all seen, I've got Bo and Beetle, my two dogs, um, and poo, dog poo especially, can't really go on the compost heap uh, with your other plant material. It just doesn't break down well enough. And if any of you have tried, and I've, I've thrown the odd piece on there, you're digging through your compost and you'll just find a basically a dried out, fossilized dog poo. I want to get away from that and I want to use it. I don't want to be poo picking it. And I'm going to let you in a secret. Every time I uh, film a video in this garden, I tend to do a poo pick first. So I go around with a plastic bag, collect all the poo, shove it in the bin. That's just going to landfill. Um, and there's going to be a big bag of dog poo in a landfill, rotting away when I could use it. Um, so it's very much like human manure. Uh, but it's going to be dog manure. Um, you need a separate bin or a separate location to do it. You really need to make the heat really high because you've got uh, p potential uh, pathogens and parasites within that dog poo that you need to break down and kill. Um, and actually, certain uh, species of parasites and things in dog poo can uh, have lethal effects for other animals, uh, like cows, for instance. Um, so, I have a bin and we're going to do some, uh, some making. So I popped out and grabbed myself a nice new bin. Uh, it was eight pounds. Um, it is plastic, but I can justify that because it's not single use um, and I'm going to be using it for many years to come um, as this, uh, this poo bin and then it'll probably turn its life into something else way down the line as well. Um, now, the one thing is you're not trying to create an anaerobic atmosphere, i.e. no oxygen. You need oxygen uh, for the bacteria to work and for the whole process of composting to work. So you do need to make some holes in your bin. If you've got a large site, um, you can just make a, a compost heap, um, you know, with pallets um, and a, an outside compost bin. If you've got a smaller garden and you want something contained, I would recommend a bin. So we're not going to need to make some holes in it. Um, so I'm using my drill. Um, as an aside, if you're looking for uh, new drill pieces or you're just starting out collecting tools, um, I've used Herbal Work. It's a relatively cheap uh, line of products, but they're actually really, really good. So I do highly recommend them if you're starting out and you're looking for something effective. Um, having the right tools makes jobs oh so much easier. Um, so what you want to do, you will just want to make a few holes around your bin, not too high up, probably I'll make three, three lines of holes here. And that sort of size is perfectly good enough. Um, so I'm just gonna put some around the uh, whole bin. And that's as simple and easy as it is to get started. Then when making your compost, you need four things. The first is obviously your dog poo. I've got a bag of dog poo here. Let's pour it in. I'm not going to show you it because it's a bit gross. The second thing you need is some carbon. Um, so you want to use grass cuttings. Um, I'm going to use this bag of uh, wood pellets that I use for both cat litter and for um, the pheasants. And then going forward, I'm going to use the straw and shavings from the bunnies. So that goes in and you're looking at about a ratio of one scoop of dog poo to one scoop of carbon. Put all of that in there. An essential component you need is good bacteria. Now you can buy these online, but actually you can just go into your garden, dig up some soil, and there is good bacteria in this soil, which will help break everything down. And you wanna be putting about one scoop of soil from your garden in about once a week to continue uh, a never, never ending source of uh, bacteria coming into your compost. And then finally, like all good recipes, 
you need a little bit of liquid because bacteria can do nothing if it doesn't have a hospital environment to grow in. So if you've got an aquarium, you can use old aquarium water or you can just use old grade uh, dish, wa dish water as long as you've not been um, putting any chemicals um, in it. And you end up with your bin looking like this, which actually does not look too bad considering there's a load of poo in there. So I'm going to put the lid back on to keep it in place. And then over the next few weeks, I'll be adding this. Um, it does suggest that you um, mix it. Um, I've read varying things um, from every couple of days to once a week. I'm going to go with the once a week thing because we, you know, you want to do as little work as needed to make this good stuff. And then we'll see how it does. And I may just mix it um, more and more just to make sure the heat is getting around and everything's properly spread. This should heat up considerably. Uh, once it's all got going, if you've ever dug open a compost heap, and you will see steam come out. And again, with uh, muck piles, uh, uh, stables and things like that, you can see the steam visibly coming out as everything breaks down. So this should really heat up. The other thing is, it really shouldn't smell. If you know anything about compost toilets, you'll know that you can fill something up with poo and cover it in compost shavings or whatever, and the smell really isn't that bad. Um, so I'm hoping the same will be true of this. I'm really keen to see how this, uh, this goes because it'll be uh, another source of uh, really great compost uh, for growing stuff in. But also, I'll manage to just cut out all of that plastic I use when I'm collecting poo and throwing it away. And it's another thing that won't be leaving my garden, won't be leaving my house and going into landfill. Um, if you've done this before, then please let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear about your experience. And if you haven't done it and you've got questions, please ask me and I'll try and tell you, I've got a couple of friends doing this as well. So we're gonna see how we go. Um, if you are on Facebook, please come over and join us at Brimwood Farms Community Group. If you've enjoyed the video, it's helped you, uh, please hit the uh, like button and subscribe and I will see you very soon. Bye bye.